When making a three-axis cut, two basic kinds of machining operation are required. Uh, if you look up here in the 3D menu, we have our roughing passes and finish passes. So roughing we use to hog out the majority of the material. It often leaves a sort of stair step behind. And then finishing will come in with a more refined bit, often a spherical ball end bit. And that's when we get our surface looking perfect. So we'll only be covering two of these operations. There's many different kinds depending on your form, but we'll start with area roughing. And I like to retitle these something a little more apparent, like roughing. For the drive surfaces, I'll click here on the top, and initially it will show the entire part as being a drive surface, and we're going to limit that in just a moment. So that's our drive, 15 different entities. Now if I go down to Containment and click on Selection, I want to click here on the right. So we want to pick from Solids as opposed to from Wireframe. And then this box in the upper right-hand corner, or loop, is the one you want to have selected. What that'll allow us to do is click on one edge, and then the entire closed loop edge gets selected. Otherwise, you'll have to pick those out by hand, and it's just a little more trouble. Okay, so I'll hit Yes again. And even though we don't get a great visualization, what we've established is that the entire object is the drive region for the cut. But then that cut should be limited to fall only within this edge that we put as our containment region. Okay, so we have a lot of options. The tool path type is already established as rough. As for the tool itself, we'll need something relatively small because our chess piece isn't very big. So I'll head to the tool library. For roughing passes, you generally want a flat end bit. So I'll look down here for flat end mill. And let's try the five millimeter flat end mill. If it's too small, it's more likely to break, and it just takes much longer to make the cut. So we're looking for a compromise between a bit that's a little bit sturdier, but that will still capture a certain amount of detail. I'll make sure the holder looks like I want it to. We'll just stick with the default. As for stock, we'll leave this all alone. And for stock to leave, the default here looks good. So let's just leave behind a millimeter of material for our finishing pass to grab. Now for cut parameters, Here's a step down of 0.5 millimeters, so that's pretty small. That should give us a good amount of refinement. And then these features are all filled in automatically. So I'll hit OK. Uh, the back plot will calculate if I click right here. And then it looks like I was just getting ahead of myself. It was taking its time. So there's our back plot. I can bring this up on the verification. And we can see what this is going to look like. So depending on how hard the material is we're cutting out, this is probably far too granular of a step down. We could go with something a lot bulkier. You can also see that a five millimeter bit can't quite plug into some of the details that we're hoping to grab. So let's make a change. And to do that, I'll head back into Parameters and Tool. And this time we'll select a library tool with a smaller diameter. So let's say we do flat end mill and we'll go all the way down to three millimeters. Okay, so I'll hit OK and regenerate. The back plot does its work. And now if I verify again, what I'm hoping to see is the tool actually plugging in a little bit better to some of these edge details. If it doesn't get all the way there, don't worry, because we're still going to take off a little bit more material when it comes to the finishing pass. Okay, so now that we have the rough pass looking how we like, we can add on a finish pass. To do that, I'll head back up to our finishing area for MOPs, and I will select Raster. Raster just describes the process of the tool heading back and forth, kind of like a printer might. It'll be the same set of processes for selecting the drive surface, followed by the containment region, which is established as this outline. And you'll see many of the same options here. Our tool, in this case, we'd like to be a ball end. So up here at the top, we have the ball nose end mills, and I'll pick the smallest one in the library. Here we have our holder, and I'll leave that as the default. Leave stock alone. Although for stock to leave, I'll put down zero and zero. Now for cut parameters, we have the opportunity to set the step over, so we'll come back and change this in a moment. Let's see what a 1.35 step over looks like. And for tool containment, we want to make sure that we are containing to the inside of the line we've established, instead of allowing the tool to jump up onto that line to its center point. 
Okay, now the back plot's starting to get a little bit busy, so I'll just verify the path we made. And you can see here that we're leaving behind a pretty significant amount of scallop. So that's what happens when the step over is too generous and the ball end isn't able to get all the way down to the surface. So we'll head back to parameters, cut parameters, and let's make ourselves a really tiny step over, like 0.5 millimeters. Regenerate the toolpath. And then we'll head back to verify and take a look. Great, so now that we've verified that our machining operations are looking good via simulation, all that's left is to post-process these tool paths into G-Code. G-Code is a simple text file that the CNC machine understands, and we can produce those text files by highlighting our group of tool paths and pressing this button here that says G1. I could just post these tool paths out with all the defaults set as they are, Although every CNC machine is a little bit different, if you're not sure which post-processor settings your CNC machine requires, I recommend you contact the manufacturer for instructions.